try to do that. Um, so yeah, thank you for the introduction, and the, I would like to thank the uh, organizers. I feel extremely honored to be here. Um, so I'll be talking about a, a many-body uh, formulation of topological phases of matter. In particular, I will be talking about uh, symmetry-protected topological phases, such as um, topological insulators and the other variants. And the, uh, in particular, I will be focusing on the fermionic ones, um, which has extra complications, so we had to work a little bit harder. Um, so the, I'd like to thank my uh, collaborators, my, my student Hassan, uh, who is graduating next spring, and the, my former pastor, Ken. And so I've been working on this uh, subject for a few years by now, and we have a series of publications. Um, so you may have heard a, some version of my talk, um, or at least closely related uh, to the topic which I'm going to talk about today. Um, but today's focus will be time reversal symmetry, um, which, so yeah, like I said, I've been working on, uh, uh, on this uh, project of constructing many body topological invariants, but time reversal symmetry was the, the almost the last symmetry I wanted to crack, which was the most difficult, but I thought it is most interesting, I think. Okay, so, um, um, so the, here's a quick overview. So um, as the title suggested, I would be interested in many body um, formulation of topological phases, and I want to contrast this formulation with the um, single particle formulations of topological phases of matter. For example, for, for two-dimensional time reversal symmetric topological phases, um, yeah, I mean, not, not just for 2D time reversal symmetric topological insulators, but many topological insulators of various kinds. Um, we, we often rely on the band picture. So we have a bands and we have a gap. And the, at, at each band, we have a um, block wave functions. And the topological phases or um, topological invariants can be can be described in terms of the topology of this block wave functions, which is parameterized by the single particle momentum. And for example, for 2D topological insulator, we have a, a formula for the topological insulator, which may be looking like this. Um, so detail, uh, for detail the form of the formula is not important now, but it suffice to say that it is written in the language of single particle wave function. Okay, so I, I, I want to say this had the uh, tremendous success in the sense that it predicted um, the topological insulators and it got detected later and so on and so forth. Um, but nevertheless, question remains. So um, if we have a um, electron electron interactions, which may be weak, but which may be rather strong, and in that case, um, we, we want to, uh, to uh, talk about topological phases of matter, so we want to go beyond this, this formulation. So that is the uh, main goal of this talk. Um, so our formula uh, for topological invariant, uh, for example, for the case of topological insulator, uh, looks like this. And the, um, it looks rather complicated at this moment, unfortunately. But I just want to, to mention that in this formula, it's, it's written entirely in terms of this many-body ground state and the reduced density matrix uh, constructed out of the ground state. So there's no trace of single particle uh, formulation in this formula. Everything is written in the many-body language. Okay, so, so, um, um, so um, the purpose of my talk is to uh, explain what is in this formula and the, where it comes from. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is one example, but there's other, other cases we can talk about, and they, I, I'll discuss that. So, um, 
Oops. Oh, yeah. So let me say a few words about symmetry protected topological phases. And the, by that, the obvious example is topological insulator. By, but, but by that, I mean a phase which is fully gapped and the um, and more importantly, ground state is unique. So if you draw this um, tree diagram of phases of matter, um, we are interested in basically phases which cannot be detected by all the parameter. So we need some sort of topological invariance to characterize them. And we are interested in gapped. And we are also interested in particular kind of gapped phases, which is, which is uh, symmetry protected topological phases. OK, so um, just uh, one more slide for SPT phase. So, so in SPT phase, uh, we make a topological distinction of quantum ground state uh, in the presence of symmetry. So uh, if we don't have symmetry, uh, SPT phases may be adiabatically connected to topologically trivial phases, such as the atomic insulators. But if you impose some symmetry, such as time reversal symmetry, or some other symmetries, um, then um, your phase diagram is, will be disconnected into pieces like this. So then uh, phase of your interest may not be connected to a uh, trivial phase anymore uh, as, 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 as in, the, uh, in the presence of symmetry. Um, so here we are making a distinction between uh, different ground state in the presence of symmetry. So we're assuming symmetry is preserved so there's no other parameter to, to uh, distinguish different ground states. And the, instead, we need something topological, topological invariant to distinguish different uh, phases or different ground states. Um, so I will explain the many-body invariants first for the simplest example, uh, which will be the Hardin spin chain. So this is the... Um, uh, uh, so, so this is a bosonic system. Um, whereas uh, for fermionic systems, such as topological inserters, uh, I need a little bit more um, 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 techniques or technology. Uh, so I will first uh, describe basic strategy for the bosonic cases, then I will move on to fermionic cases. Okay. Um, so the, the key... Um, um, key ingredient is something we call a um, partial transpose operation. Um, the, and the, I first defined this partial transpose operation for bosonic systems. And as it turns out, inventing this operation for fermionic system is the kind of main um, obstacle or main difficult part. But for bosonic part, it's, it's rather easy. So I consider uh, um, Hilbert space, which has some tensor decomposition. So it, there are two parts in your Hilbert space. And then um, you just write out your density matrix in, in, in this Hilbert space using some basis, uh, say E1, E2. And then you write out the matrix element. So in this partial transpose, uh, you take a transpose but not for the whole density matrix, but you take the, the a transport only for, let's say, the um, second Hilbert space. So it's a, um, maybe uh, a little bit difficult to see here, but if you look at this uh, equation carefully, I exchange um, um, column and row only for the second Hilbert space without touching the first Hilbert space. So J and L, they are swapped but I and K are intact. So that's the partial transpose, okay? Um, so, so this is going to be my main tool to, to construct a topological invariant, but I'm not the first one who uses this uh, operation. So um, this operation has been used in quantum information community to describe a um, quantum entanglement. Um, so uh, partial transpose has been used to construct some sort of entanglement measure, which I will not uh, uh, describe in detail, but there's some use in, in this history. 
but as it turns out, the partial transpose is also useful to, this, uh, to construct a many-body topological invariant of symmetry-protected topological phases in the presence of time reversal symmetry. Um, so so um, 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 the, the, the connection to time reversal symmetry may be understood from the fact that taking transpose is, is basically like taking a, a complex conjugation, which is, uh, uh, which is basically taking time reversal. Okay, so, um, but I want to go, go, go through some examples, and which is the a, um, ordained chain. So uh, it's the uh, canonical example of symmetry protected phases. Um, it can be protected by various uh, types of symmetries. For example, spin rotation uh, protect the Harden phases uh, being deformed into topological trivial state. But here I will be focus, focusing on time reversal symmetry. So I will impose time reversal symmetry. And then uh, Harden phase uh, is, is an uh, example of SPT phase. Uh, famously, the ground state of the Harden phase can be um, picturized by the collection of singlets or dimers uh, or maybe bear pairs. Um, so then, uh, so basically in this construction, we split a spin one into two virtual spin one halves. And these virtual spin one halves, they form a um, bear pairs. Uh, uh, I always forget, is it inter or inter? This is the... Um, Intersite, intersite bear pairs. Um, um, so um, that's this is the um, um, uh, uh, kind of uh, picture for the ground state of the the Harden phase. Okay. Um, so um, I said something about quantum entanglement before. So um, to demonstrate the usefulness of the um, partial transpose operation to detect quantum entanglement. I first want to focus a, just a single, pair, single bear pair and ask if there's entanglement. Well, we know sort of that there should be some entanglement, um, but how do we quantify the, 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 the entanglement? So, so using partial transpose, uh, we, can, we can construct some sort of um, number or measure which, which says the, uh, the, which can quantify quantum entanglement. So, um, I have a bell pair, which is a part of the halogen chain, if you wish. And then I construct the um, density matrix. Okay, so the, following the definition I presented before, I take the partial transpose, which means in this case we exchange these number one, zero, or zero, one, only for the second, something sitting on the second entry. So here, partial transpose doesn't change uh, this part of the density matrix. Whereas for the last two terms, taking partial transpose uh, changes, changes these two terms into, into this. Okay, so we get the new, new matrix, partially transposed uh, density matrix. Okay, so what people have noticed before was, was something strange. There's something interesting about partially transposed density matrix. Okay, so um, if you look at the uh, eigenvalues of this partially transposed density matrix, um, it's actually not a valid density matrix in the sense that some eigenvalues are, are negative. In this case, there are four eigenvalues, um, but there's one eigenvalue which is now negative after taking the partial transpose. So it's, it's, a, um, it's a, um, some sort of I think in condensed matter physics language, some sort of response theory. So we take a partial transpose. If there is some quantum entanglement, your state will be battery changed. Whereas if you have a classical state like this, taking partial transpose doesn't affect it at all. Uh, we're here, partial transpose, uh, 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 the effect of partial transpose is, is so strong such that we now get a negative ITM value. So, Basically, the counting the, um, the uh, negative eigenvalues which appear after the partial transpose give some sort of um, um, some sense that how much quantum entanglement you have in the bare pair or in, in quantum state in general. This is called a PPT criterion. Um, 
for our purpose, this story about quantum entanglement is related, but not exactly, because we are, we are going to talking about uh, topology rather than entanglement. So let me now um, move on to discuss topological invariant of Haldane chain. And for that, we follow this uh, work by uh, Porman and Turner. OK. So um, they constructed um, um, topological invariant of the Haldane chain using tensor network. But here, I, I phrase their invariant in, 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 in using the partial transpose operation. So their construction goes as follows. So I, I take the um, Harden chain, which is living here. But then I take out the interval i. So then I first uh, trace over all degrees of freedom outside of this interval. Then I get the reduced density matrix for, the, for this interval i. So I call it the law sub i. Then I partition this uh, interval into two subintervals, i1 and i2. Okay. And with this um, bipartitioning, I take the um, partial transpose for the, uh, let's say, for, the, for, for I1. Okay. So then I get the partially transposed reduced density matrix. Okay. So that's, that's step three. And then I, I, I form this, this quantity, which is a trace of uh, original reduced density matrix and partially transposed uh, reduced density matrix. And then I will look at the phase of this quantity. And the claim is that the phase of this quantity is quantized as far as this i, i1, i2 are sufficiently large as compared to the correlation length of the Haldane chain. And then the value will be plus 1 for topological trivial uh, 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 ground state, whereas for Haldane uh, ground state, it's, it's minus 1. So that's the um, construction. Um, to make uh, uh, some intuition, to give you some more intuition, we can also write this invariant using tensor network representation, where, uh, where I represent my ground state using these um, small boxes. And the, um, for the ground state, I have a um, um, uh, one uh, 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 column of boxes, which has one dangling uh, uh, physical spin index. Uh, there are two uh, other indices, which are just virtually there to encode the uh, quantum correlation of this state. OK. So using this, um, 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 this uh, topological invariant uh, can be represented in this way, where you can sort of see there are four uh, 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 unit of this uh, because uh, each density matrix has ground state bra and ground state ket, and they have a two such uh, uh, two kinds of density matrices. So I have a four columns, uh, four rows, sorry, and then uh, 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 this trace and the uh, transpose basically connect to these bonds. Okay, so um, this invariant, if you look at this diagram long enough. Um, uh, as it turns out, you can, you can sort of deform this uh, network, um, assuming it's, it's a, it's a uh, um, topological phase. And then um, um, this uh, um, tensor network can be deformed into, into a, a, which is uh, some uh, interesting space time, which looks like, like this. So, um, 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 so the tensor network, uh, we want to view it as a, a, a space-time pass integral, discrete version of space-time pass integral. Um, but this space-time now is, is, is this peculiar space-time. In, in the discrete notation, it looks like this. But uh, this can be deformed into this uh, 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 space-time, which is called the uh, real projective plane. And so uh, it can be viewed as a um, two-dimensional plane with a small hole. And the, um, this uh, 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 circumference, opposite points on, on the circumference of these uh, 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 points, they are uh, oppositely identified. Okay? So that's what is called the projective plane. Um, so, so that's the um, 
the uh, topological invariant of the Hardy engine. And so it's a pass integral, so you can interpret the topological invariant as a pass integral on unoriented space-time, which is a real projective brain. Um, so why we, are, why we are interested in this quantity? Um, to give you uh, some more um, intuition, I want to draw an analogy to the topological invariant of the quantum hole system, which is basically just hole conductivity. Okay? So um, the idea is, is that we want to uh, look at, we want to detect the phases of matter uh, by introducing some sort of background, um, which I denoted uh, X and A here, and then I just uh, trace over or integrate over all uh, degrees of freedom, which defines uh, effective action for this X and A, and in this notation I mean X is some space time, uh, which can be torus or maybe a real projective plane, for example, and A is a background gauge field configuration. For quantum Hall effect, uh, sorry, for, so then for topological phases, uh, this pass integral gives you something uh, pure imaginary uh, sitting on this exponential. Uh, um, for, the, for the quantum Hall effect, uh, this phase part is given by the celebrated the Chan Simons term with quantized coefficient. I forgot to put uh, I here, but this is a phase quantity. Um, so, drawing the analogy to this quantum hall uh, example, what we are doing for the, for the Hardin phase is that for Hardin phase, there's no U1 gauge field because charge is not conserved, but we are considering a background which is the unoriented space-time, and for the unoriented space-time, phase part of the partition function is quantized, either zero or pi, and for Hardin phase, it's, it's pi. Okay, so, um, okay, so I think I'm spending too much time for the bosonic case, but now what I want to do is to basically um, um, follow this strategy for other uh, fermionic other cases, including um, topological insulators and also K-types, K-types, their fermionic uh, 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 topological phases of matter. So K-type chain is a, I would say, um, fermionic analog of Hardin spin chain. It's a one-dimensional chain where fermions are hopping on the on the lattice, and there's a hopping as well as a uh, this pairing, pairing term. And in this simplest uh, model. Uh, the phase diagram looks like this. So there's a topological phase which exists when um, this chemical potential is, is smaller than the, the hopping and the uh, pairing, whereas if the uh, chemical potential dominates uh, hopping and the, um, 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 the pairing, we get this, a topological trivial ground state. Okay? Um, so um, skipping some details aside, of course, this is a system which hosts a Majorana fermions, and the, uh, there's experimental interest, of course. But um, um, this is the um, uh, very close analogy of, of Hardin spin chain in the sense that ground state can be also written like this. So here, um, we take the physical uh, electron, which we can split into real and imaginary part, and then, um, in the uh, topologically non-trivial phase of the uh, Majorana fermion chain, Kita F chain, uh, uh, these real, real and imaginary part Majorana fermions, they form a uh, inter-site uh, uh, kind of pairs, fermion version of pairs. Okay, so the question is, can we detect um, a topology of the uh, Majorana fermion chain by using basically the same technique as we use in the Hardin spin chain, okay? So that is the, um, that is the question I want to ask. Um, so um, this interesting uh, uh, complication for the uh, Majorana fermion chain, uh, in the presence of time reversal symmetry, I want to impose time reversal symmetry. Um, so then with time reversal symmetry, um, previous studies suggest that um, um, different phases, topological distinct phases in the, in the Majorana fermion chain are classified by Z8 quantum number. Uh, so classification is, 
for the, for the Haldane chain was Z2, but now we should detect Z8, eight distinct topological phases in this, uh, in this business. Um, um, so, but anyway, we want to follow as closely as possible the strategy of the, uh, uh, we used to construct the topological invariant of the Hardane chain, but then uh, there's this, this issue. What is, what is then the partial transpose operation, which we used before? Um, so partial transpose operation is very transparent for bosonic systems, but for fermionic systems, um, the problem arises because fermionic Filbert space doesn't uh, 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 nicely factorize in the sense that if you have a two fermionic operators, let's say here and there, even when they are far apart, they still know each other because of fermionic sign, fermion sign, uh, uh, fermi statistics. So um, the, the, this actually complicates the construction of partial transpose operation, which with the varied trans, uh, constructing varied uh, 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 fermion partial transpose is, is rather, rather, as it turns, it's rather complicated. So this is the first thing we, we tried to, 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 to uh, uh, construct. And the use, once we construct the fermionic version of partial transpose, we can then use partial transpose to construct the um, many-body topological invariant for fermionic phases with time reversal symmetry. And as it turns out, uh, people have looked at the definition of partial transpose uh, for fermionic systems, but, but we found that the, the existing definition was rather uh, useless for our purpose. The, the reason is the following. Um, the reason we noticed that was the following. So we looked at the um, entanglement property of the Majorana fermion chain. So the pre by previous definition, I mean people previously looked at the, the fermion version of partial transpose essentially by taking the, the jordan Wigner transformation. So they, they take the um, fermion chain, but they convert it to bosonic system. Once you rewrite uh, your fermion system in, as, a, as a spin chain system, you can use the um, definition, you can take the definition of bosonic system to define bosonic partial transpose. But as it turns out, um, it doesn't detect the presence of Majorana dimers, which is the, which I used to, to pictureize the ground state of Majorana fermion chain. So the protein here, is the um, entanglement measure, which is called entanglement negativity. I will not go into the, the detail of this quantity, but it's something which is supposed to detect quantum correlation. This quantum correlation using the Jordan Wigner version of uh, a partial transpose uh, says entanglement in topological non trivial phase of, of Kitaf chain is actually zero, close to zero if you are deep inside, of to deep inside the topological phase, which is sort of very strange, okay? So that's why we, we noticed that it is actually important to reconstruct the uh, uh, partial transport operation for fermions from scratch, okay? Um, so, um, the, um, so that's what we did, and uh, 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 this slide exists here just to say we, we reconstructed it. Um, Details are, I think, um, I want to skip some details, but uh, we can construct fermion version of a partial transpose. And for fermionic uh, systems, uh, it is convenient to use expansion to define your density matrix. I mean, any operator can be expanded uh, uh, as, a, as a polynomial of fermion operators. Uh, and then, uh, when you take a partial transpose, um, we, we add some phase uh, to the matrix element, which didn't exist for bosonic systems, which is important. But I think I'm going to skip this uh, 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 defin uh, details of the definition of the partial transpose, but I just want to say we really did it, OK? Um, so now, using this partial transpose, uh, lest we'll be 
rather similar to the bosonic case. So this is basically the same as the, uh, what we did for bosonic, bosonic case. So uh, we have a now uh, Kitaev chain living on this line. And then I, for the same procedure, I, I, I construct the reduced density matrix. And then I take the partial transpose for the part of this interval i. And then I consider this quantity or the phase of this quantity. OK? Um, so um, as before, this is supposed to be a pass integral of, 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 of uh, uh, fermionic systems living on um, an oriented space time. OK. So um, and this really works. Um, so here is the um, numerics of the, um, this quantity. So, this, this, so here, the, this is a phase, and this is the amplitude of this quantity z. And let's just focus on the amplitude, uh, sorry, the phase part. And it's, it's plotted in the unit of pi over 4, which is 2 pi divided by 8. OK, so, um, so once again, there are two phases, topologically trivial and the topologically non-trivial phases in the Kita F chain. Um, so I will be focusing on, on, on this case. This, so in topological trivia uh, uh, part, uh, uh, phase, uh, this phase is basically just zero. But as you go into topological and non-trivial phase, uh, this phase of this quantity is quantized in the unit of 2 pi divided by 8. So it's, it's 1. Um, so, so that means this quantity can detect uh, Z8 classification of, of the Kitaev uh, chain. Uh, okay. um, so now uh, I want to, for the last, uh, I just want to present one more example, which is the uh, topological instrator. Um, so topological instrator is, so there's some difference. Now it's a two-dimensional system as opposed to one-dimensional system. Um, another difference is that Kitaev chain doesn't preserve a particular number. It, it still pre uh, preserves uh, uh, even the parity of the particular number. But in topological insulator, uh, a particular number U1 is strictly conserved. So there are now two symmetries to talk about, time reversal and charge U1. Okay? So then um, we have to, 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 to construct topological invariant, uh, taking into account these two symmetries. OK. Um, so um, but other than that, construction is rather similar to the case of Kitaev chain. So, so now I have a two-dimensional system, which is wrapped into a cylinder. OK. And as before, I focus on a, a sub-regions of this uh, cylinder. So now I have a region R1 and R3. And the other part, I just call them R2. Okay? And then I first uh, trace over this region R2 to get a reduced density matrix, which is living on region R1 and R3. Okay. Um, in addition to the, the partial trace, um, I have to decorate this uh, reduced density matrix by adding this factor, which is the um, uh, which twists the phase of the wave function along y direction only for region R two. Okay, so this is something I call partial U one twist. So it's a um, kind of a uh, twisted version of a reduced density matrix living on region R1 and R3. Um, but then I will take the um, partial transpose for region R1. Okay? And then I combine these quantities to form a, this quantity Z. So um, there's similarity before. So the previous example was simpler because it's basically raw. Uh, partial transpose row, and that, that was it. Here, because of the uh, extra U1 symmetry, I need to add this phase factor. And what it does is to produce, so, so as before, um, taking partial transpose, I basically simulate the pass integral 
on an oriented surface. But because of the, the U1 uh, symmetry, um, I have to introduce background U1 gauge field uh, on top of this background space-time manifold. Uh, the space-time manifold is a Klein bottle times uh, 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 periodic S1. Um, but uh, this extra U1 gives you additional background, uh, appropriate background uh, gauge field configurations. Um, okay, so, so the, the just final thing. So the topological invariant, if you compute it numerically, it's the phase part is either plus or minus one. So for topological insert, it's minus one. Okay, so I just put my summary here. And the, thank you for your attention. <laughs>